On the far edge of Western Europe, where powerful Atlantic waves crash against old cliffs and fog drifts across green valleys, there exists a region holding remarkable secrets. From far away, it appears calm, almost overlooked by time. Yet under its woodlands and stone-filled valleys lies one of Europe's most fascinating genetic tales. This is Galicia. Ice Age survivors found refuge here. Mediterranean farmers sailed to these shores. Steppe warriors rode in from distant lands. Celtic tribes built their homes. Roman legions marched through. Germanic kings ruled. And surprisingly, a North African wave arrived long before most people realize. Each group left something behind in the blood of the people. Galicia is not simply Europe's edge. It is a place where some of the continent's oldest populations came together. More than 40,000 years ago, long before anyone built cities, worked with metal, or created writing systems, small bands of humans already lived in northern Iberia. During the harshest period of the Ice Age, roughly 20,000 years before Christ, massive ice sheets blanketed most of Europe. The cold was extreme. Survival was difficult almost everywhere. But Galicia stayed safe. It became part of what scientists call the Franco-Cantabrian Refuge. This was one of the very few zones where humans could survive the brutal climate. The maternal DNA lines from these people, especially HV0 and U5, still exist in Galicia today. These genetic markers pass from mother to child, generation after generation. They represent an unbroken thread reaching back to the Ice Age. These early hunter-gatherers probably had darker skin and strong bone structure, but many carried a genetic mutation that made eyes lighter in color. This means blue eyes and green eyes already appeared here during the Ice Age itself. They survived as coastal hunters and gatherers. They created art in caves. They collected shells. They explored the Atlantic coastline. Their paintings still exist on cave walls. Their shell piles still mark ancient campsites. These traces show an Atlantic way of life that continued for thousands of years. They were not primitive, they were skilled, adaptive, and creative, and their descendants never fully disappeared. Around 5,500 years before Christ, a major change began. Farming communities from Anatolia, in modern-day Turkey, reached Iberia by crossing the Mediterranean Sea. They arrived in boats. They brought wheat and barley. They brought domesticated animals. They brought pottery and new tools. They brought completely different ways of organizing life, but they did not wipe out the people already living here. Instead, something more complex happened. The two groups mixed. These first farmers were usually lighter skinned than the Ice Age groups. They were often shorter in height. Their maternal DNA, passed through mothers, frequently belonged to lineages called K, J, and T2. Their paternal DNA, inherited from fathers, often included a marker called G2A. This marker is strongly connected to the spread of early farming across Europe. Together, the local hunter-gatherers and the incoming farmers created a blended population. Farming gradually spread across Galicia. People began building large stone monuments. The region developed into a stable, mixed society. The older Ice Age ancestry continued mainly through maternal lines. The Near Eastern ancestry from farmers passed through both mothers and fathers. For thousands of years, this mixed population lived in relative stability. But the biggest genetic transformation was still coming. Between 2500 and 2000 years before Christ, a powerful new population entered the region. They were connected to something called the Bell Beaker culture. This culture gets its name from distinctive bell-shaped cups used for drinking. But more importantly, these people were part of massive migrations spreading from the Pontic Caspian steppe. This is the vast grassland stretching from modern Ukraine to Kazakhstan. These groups brought advanced metalworking. They brought bronze tools and weapons. They brought new social structures. And they brought a genetic profile that dramatically reshaped all of Iberia. The most dramatic change appeared in the paternal line, the line passed from fathers to sons. A genetic marker called R1BM269 arrived, and it spread with incredible speed. It did not mix gradually. It replaced almost all earlier male lineages. By the end of the Bronze Age, 
most men in Galicia carried a specific branch called R1B P312. Shortly after, a uniquely Iberian variant called R1B DF27 became dominant. This branch almost certainly formed inside Iberia itself, between roughly 2200 and 1800 years before Christ. This happened long before the Iron Age, long before anyone spoke Celtic languages in the region. These Bronze Age newcomers were typically taller than earlier populations. They had lighter skin, they often had blue or green eyes. These traits came from their steppe ancestry. Their arrival was not peaceful, it was a population replacement on the male side. Yet maternal lines from earlier groups survived and mixed with the new arrivals. The region was transformed. And this transformation set the foundation for the Celtic societies that would later emerge across the Atlantic zone. By the Iron Age, around 900 years before Christ, Galicia had developed into a distinct Atlantic Celtic society. The landscape filled with castros. These were fortified hilltop settlements built between 900 BC and 100 AD. Inside these stone walls were circular houses. There were workshops for metalworking. There were shared communal spaces. Archaeology reveals a warrior culture. Evidence shows skilled ironworking. Art from this period displays swirling geometric patterns similar to those found in Ireland and Brittany. But genetics reveals something crucial about how this Celtic culture formed. It did not arrive through the classic Celtic migrations from Central Europe. The Hallstatt culture and Latin culture, famous Celtic societies from Austria and France, did not replace the population here. Galicia remained dominated by R1B DF27, the paternal lineage that had already become common during the Bronze Age. This tells us something important. Celtic culture in Galicia developed locally, it spread through Atlantic coastal networks, not through invasion from Central Europe. The people did not change, the culture evolved among them. Iron Age Galicians likely look similar to many modern Galicians. They had fair to medium skin tones. Most had brown hair, many had blue or green eyes. These physical traits reflect the steppe ancestry that remained strongest in northwestern Iberia. Their language was called Galaetian. It was recorded in inscriptions from about 150 BC to 100 AD. Galician was closely related to the Celtic languages spoken in the British Isles. Words and grammar show clear connections to ancient Irish and Welsh. Today, echoes of that Celtic era still survive in Galicia. The Gaeta bagpipes sound across festivals. Ancient stones still show carved spirals. The fast-paced Muñera dance continues at celebrations. These are living connections to a Celtic civilization that was born on Iberian soil and has been carried forward by the people of this land. When Roman armies arrived around 137 years before Christ, Galicia did not simply collapse, it resisted, then it adapted. The Romans brought engineering and roads, they brought urban planning and administration, they brought Latin which eventually evolved into Galician and Portuguese. Roman influence was strong culturally, but genetically their impact was limited. Only a small amount of ancestry from Italy and the Eastern Mediterranean entered the region during Roman rule. Galicia remained, above all, an Atlantic population. The Roman period lasted for centuries, cities grew, trade expanded, infrastructure improved, but the genetic makeup of the people stayed largely continuous with the Iron Age population that came before. The Visigoths were a Germanic people who ruled Galicia from 409 AD to 585 AD. They formed the first stable Germanic kingdom in Iberia. Their cultural influence was greater than their genetic contribution. They added only a small number of new paternal lineages inherited through fathers. Their legacy survives more in law codes than in DNA. It survives in place names. It survives in early Christian architecture and religious practices. But the genetic signature of the Visigoths in modern Galicia is surprisingly small. Most of the population continued descending primarily from the earlier Celtic and Roman era inhabitants. Modern whole genome research has revealed one of the most unexpected chapters in Galician history. A significant genetic layer from North, Africa and the Middle East exists in Galicia today. This ancestry makes up between 13 and 16% of the modern Galician gene pool. 
but here is what makes it shocking. This ancestry entered Galicia before the Islamic conquest of Iberia, not after it. Genetic dating methods place this mixture between 620 and 670 AD. This was during the final decades of the Visigothic Kingdom before Muslim armies crossed into Spain. The arrival was strongly male-driven. About 21% of Galician Y-DNA inherited through fathers traces back to North African or Middle Eastern origins. In sharp contrast, the maternal lines passed from mothers remained close to just 1%. This pattern shows that the genetic contribution came primarily through men. These men may have arrived through military movements, they may have come through trade networks, they may have arrived through early maritime contacts along the Atlantic coast. They left very few cultural traces behind. No major language shift, no religious transformation at that time. Yet, their genetic signature became a permanent layer in Galicia's ancestry. This finding challenges many assumptions about Iberian history. It shows that significant North African genetic influence arrived earlier and through different routes than traditionally believed. Today, Galicia stands genetically distinct from much of Spain. Studies show that Galicians cluster closest to Basques, Asturians, and the Atlantic French populations. Their steppe ancestry is higher than in most other Iberian regions. This reflects the strong Bronze Age migrations that reshaped the Northwest. Their DF27 paternal lineage, inherited through fathers, reaches some of the highest frequencies anywhere in Europe. And while Galicians do carry North African ancestry, it is notably lower than in Andalusia and other southern Spanish regions. In physical appearance, many modern Galicians show fair or intermediate skin tones. Brown hair is most common, though lighter shades appear frequently. Blue and green eyes occur at higher rates than in most of Spain. Culturally, Galicia maintains its Atlantic character strongly. The music is distinct. Bagpipes echo through villages. Traditional dances continue at festivals. The architecture differs from central Spain. Stone construction and Celtic-inspired designs remain common. Seafaring traditions run deep. Fishing communities have existed for millennia. Maritime culture shapes daily life along the coast. And the language, Galician, preserves a unique identity. It shares roots with Portuguese but maintains its own grammar and vocabulary. Galicia has never fully merged into a single Spanish identity. It keeps something older, something tied to the Atlantic world rather than the Mediterranean. Galicia's past is not a simple straight line from ancient times to today. It is a story built in layers. Each layer remains visible. None has been fully erased. There are the Ice Age refugees who survived in this coastal refuge when ice covered most of Europe. Their maternal lines still flow through the population. There are the Neolithic farmers who brought agriculture and mixed with the hunter-gatherers. Their ancestry blended into the population permanently. There are the Bronze Age upheavals when steppe peoples arrived and transformed the paternal lineages. This created the genetic foundation for what would become Celtic Galicia. There is the Atlantic Celtic culture which developed locally and connected Galicia to Ireland, Brittany and the wider Celtic world. This culture shaped language, art, and society for over a thousand years. There is Roman rule, which brought infrastructure and Latin, but did not genetically replace the people. There is Visigothic governance, which left legal and religious marks, but minimal genetic impact. And there is the early medieval North African wave, arriving mysteriously before the Islamic conquest and leaving a permanent genetic signature. All of these layers exist together in modern Galicia. They create one of the richest and most complex genetic landscapes in all of Europe. Galicia is often described as being on the edge of Europe. But that description misses the truth. Galicia is not the edge. It is one of Europe's oldest hearts. It preserved Ice Age populations when ice destroyed life elsewhere. It became a crossroads for Atlantic and Mediterranean peoples. It developed Celtic culture independently. It absorbed Roman civilization. It survived Germanic rule. It integrated North African genes before history recorded their arrival. Every major movement of people across Europe left traces here. Every genetic layer tells part of the story. And those layers remain alive today in the faces of the people, in their DNA, in their culture, 
and in their connection to this ancient land. Galicia stands as proof that history is not simple. Populations do not simply replace each other cleanly. Instead, they mix, adapt, and carry forward the legacy of everyone who came before. This land, where the Atlantic meets ancient stone, holds within it tens of thousands of years of human story. It is a place where the Ice Age never fully ended, where the first farmers still live in the genes of the people, where Bronze Age warriors left their mark, where Celtic culture grew from local roots, where Rome built roads that still exist, where mysterious arrivals left their children behind. Galicia is not forgotten. It is misunderstood. It is not empty. It is full of ghosts and ancestors. And it is not the edge of anything. It is one of the places where Europe itself was born, layer by layer, migration by migration, generation by generation, into the complex and beautiful genetic tapestry that exists today. If you want more stories like this, journeys connecting genetics and history with the hidden roots of our world, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment below, share your thoughts, tell me which region or group of people you'd like to explore next. Every like and every share helps bring more of these deep stories to life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.